Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We bless your holy name this morning. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. Let's just give him thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, just right where you are. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Come on, lift your hands. And just say thank you. Come on. Come on. If you're viewing online, just lift your hands and say thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Come on, prepare your heart for what God is about to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanksgiving opens the door. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Ah, hallelujah. And into his courts with praise. Thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for sparing our lives. We thank you that the worst is behind us. We thank you that the best is ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, this shit's so quiet. Come on, let's just lift up our hands. Oh, hallelujah. And I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go, let us go. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you. Father, we're so grateful to be in your altars. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to be in your house. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. As the one left for God, we turn around and we say, Lord, thank you. Praise the name of Jesus. 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 Hallow your name this morning. Father, we hallow your name. We thank you that we serve a God that is so strong that Lord just running into your name is enough. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Strong God, thank you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. We thank you for the strength of the Lord this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. 
Yeah. Really, there, there's so much areas. I'm sure if I were to ask you, you know, name three things in your life that you wish would have been better. I'm sure you could rattle it out. Yeah. But the beauty, the power of thanksgiving is acknowledging what God has done and what He's doing. Yeah. And so you don't want to become so consumed by what we want Him to do that we don't take the time to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that it didn't kill me. Amen. Thank you that it didn't, it didn't uh, cause me to be hopeless. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Keith. Amen. God bless all of you. And remember the days in, in, in you know, in Trinity. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. In Trinity cell, you know. Yes. And just praying and, and, and waiting on the Lord. And God is good. I thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Turn over to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7. And then I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 7. Alright. It's a very familiar portion of scripture. But my prayer today is that after the Lord is finished with us, we will never look at it the same. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. When found say amen. amen. Alright. I'll be reading from the New King James. Here's what it says. Be anxious for what? Nothing. Let, let, let's do that again. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And uh, you're, you're reading with me? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's, let, let's do it again. There's only two verses, right? So when I stop, I want you all to shout it boldly, right? So you found it? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like we're not looking for it now. Yeah, alright, Pastor. Since we're at the end, find it down. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, the scripture says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace, the peace of God, hallelujah, which surpasses all understanding, will what? Yes, it will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's go now. Let's fast forward. Let's go uh, to First Peter. I'm going to tie that in with a very familiar portion of scripture as well. First Peter, chapter number five. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter, chapter five. And verse. All right, let's go to verse seven. First Peter chapter five, verse seven. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your cares. We're in a we're in a time now where we have so much cares. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. The King James said that in about Philippians chapter 4. He says, be careful for nothing. I want to talk to you today on a very familiar slander we use. 
the title of my message today is not a care in this world. Come on, just come on, just just say that I have not a care in this world. Come on, come on, not a care in this world. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. I pray, Father, that you would feed us. Feed the flock of God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Not a care in this world. There was this man. He was late for a flight. I don't know if anybody was ever late for a flight before. But that's a different kind of anxiety. That's a different. It's one thing to be late for work and you're trying to get a taxi. Right? If you miss a taxi, you can always get a next one. Right? But if you miss a flight, that's a whole different story. Alright? And so he's he's late for this flight. So the man is hustling. I mean, he's running and he's sweating. I mean, I'm sure you can imagine that picture, you know, because he has an interview the next day. So he's he's trying to get catch this flight. But the problem was that he was he was about ten minutes late. So he's he's running and he's busy, and he he passed a man in uniform. And I mean, in his hustle, in his haste. Uh, he, he bumps the man, the man had a, a coffee in his, in his hand. And I mean, he almost lick off the coffee on the man's hand. <laughs> you know? And so the man said, Whoa, brother, you, you, you're late for something, boy. And so the, the man turned around and he said, Yes, I'm trying to catch a flight. You know, he told him the, the, the flight that he was on and that kind of stuff. And the, the guy said, Oh, that's my flight. I, I, I fly that plane. <laughs> I don't know if you catch what I said. <laughs> So he, in his haste, he almost bombs down the pilot, and he's running ahead of the pilot, and he's not flying the plane. And you see, sometimes, and you see, the man, he's, he said, when the man realized, he said, wait, flying the plane? So he turned around, and he saw that the uniform was actually a pilot uniform. So the man stopped, he took the rag, wiped his face. And he went back and he adjusted his pace to the pace of the pilot. Amen. Because if I'm not driving, if he's the one driving the plane, if he's sorry, if he's the one flying the plane, why should I be worried? Amen. And you see, sometimes it's, it's as though we, we, are, we are the ones that are anxious, but we're not the ones flying the plane. I don't know if you understand right? So sometimes we find ourselves uh, when we are faced with worry and anxiety, and I trust me, I know how that feels. There is a, 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 a sort of a, 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 a beating of your heart that your heart beats differently when you're anxious. <laughs> I don't know if you have ever had that experience. Your heart beats differently. And so it shows me the beauty or the power of really understanding who's the one in charge. So it, it, it really caused me to think this is why the disciples they asked Jesus to teach them one thing. They, they, now, 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 if it was me, if I'm, if I'm a disciple of Jesus and I see all the miracles that he did, and there's a number of things I would have asked Jesus to teach me. Number one, I would teach. I would ask him to teach me that word, walking on water thing. <laughs> you know, I, I, need to, I need to learn how to walk out the maracas. You know, I just, I just begin to walk over the waves. You know, that's a, that's a whole different kind of story. And then there's, for me, now, you know, pray for me, right? Pray for me. I'll, say, I'll, I'll put out a disclaimer, pray for me. Right? I know mean, you're, you're saved. <laughs> but for me, I would have asked him to teach me that water into wine thing. <laughs> I would, have, I would have asked him, I would have said, Lord, teach me that turning water into wine kind of thing so I could put that Mr. Road on business. <laughs> teach me. Lord, teach me that. But they asked him to teach them one thing. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us 
Why of all the things they could have asked Jesus to teach them? I mean, when you, I, for me as a preacher, I would say, Lord, teach me to preach. You know, the, the, the Jesus, well, let me tell you something. Everyone who come before Jesus and everyone who would come after Jesus, no one can preach like Jesus. I want you to understand that. Jesus would preach in such a way that the Bible said that they would, they would send officers to arrest him. <laughs> Isaac, they would send officers to arrest Jesus. And the officers would come in the middle of Jesus' sermon, sit in the seat. And the Bible said that they would listen to his entire sermon before they go to arrest him. And then after his sermon, they went back to the chief priests. And they said, oh, we, we, we told him to bring Jesus here. We didn't tell him to go and be a part of the service. We told him to go and bring Jesus. They said, yeah, I know. But never a man spoke like that man. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 there's a difference when he, he talks. And just imagine there's no mic in those days. You know, if I go to preach to you without a mic, I would be a little fish out of water. But there was no mic in those days. And he would project his voice the same way he spoke everything into existence. He, he would project his voice and every single thing would hear him. I remember when he's standing outside the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible said, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Why? He had to call Lazarus by name. Because had he just said, come forth, every dead man in the city would have got up. That's the power of his voice. Teach us. To pray. Uh, uh, there, there, there's something that they observed about the prayer life of Jesus. And you know what they observe? They observe that he's so calm. They, 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 they looked at his life and they, they said, listen, he's not like the other teachers. I mean, this man sleeping in storms for God's sake. You know, he's, he's, he's a different kind of a calm. So there's something about his prayer life that is seen in the way he operates, in the way he, he goes through life. He has a different kind of a calm. One time he went up to the mountain. And the Bible said that when he came down, there was this demonic case. I don't know if you, you know about demonology, but there are certain times when demons are stubborn. <laughs> there are certain times when demons... And so the Bible said that they, he had, they had this demonic child. And they are trying all day to cast out the devil. And the Bible said that when the, the father of the child saw Jesus, they said, Listen, Lord, we bring him to church. I bring him to church. And the preachers can do it. Oh my, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. But but Lord, just if you can do anything, have have compassion. And the Bible said that he, he just said, Come out. Something about the man's prayer life, brother Keith, yeah. that he just said, come on. You see, when you're spending time with God, if you spend hours before God, you just need to spend two seconds getting the devil out. You know, when you, but when you, you, you reverse it, when you spend two seconds or, or five minutes with God, then you have to spend hours trying to get the devil out of your house. But when you learn the power of prayer, Lord, teach us. We want to be in the school of prayer. Yeah. Uh, that there's something about your prayer life that is different to the other teachers. You, you, you have a way that when you talk, winds die down. You know, that there's, that, that's a different kind of a prayer life. It's a different kind of a walk. You have a way that when you speak, dead things come up. You know, you have a way that when you pass by dead coffins, by, by coffins, you just have to touch it and, and the dead will raise. That's a different kind of a prayer life. I believe that if we as a church would ask the same question that the disciples asked Jesus, we would not be as panicked or as worried about what is taking place around us. Teach us to pray. So Paul is saying, be anxious. Look at what he's saying. Be anxious for nothing. So he's dealing with an anxious people. He's addressing a people that is full of worry. 
But something is interesting. He said, but in everything by prayer. So in other words, in other words, Isaac, Paul is saying that if you're anxious, it's because of a weakness in your prayer life. Oh, Jesus. He, he, look, look, look at what he said. Be anxious for nothing. But here's what he said. But in everything. So in other words, as long as anxiety is present, then there is a, a lapse. There is a, a weakness. There's a deficiency in our prayer life. How do I know that? He said, but everything by prayer. So he's, in other words, he's saying that y'all are anxious because you're not praying about everything. Mm. You're anxious because you believe that there are some things that you need to pray about and others is, you know, that's God's business, you know? But he said, be anxious for nothing. You know, God spoke to me about this while I was meditating on this word this morning. And the Lord said to me, Adana, this morning in, 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 in prayer and meditation concerning this, he said, he said something. He said, anxiety is living in a future without God. <laughs> let, 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 oh, Jesus. Let me, let, me, let me break that down again. He said, anxiety, Brother Keats, when you're living in worry, you're living in anxiety, you are living in a future without God in it. Let me show you, let me break it down, let me break it down a little more. He said in, in Jeremiah, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts to prosper you and not to harm you. Thoughts to give you hope and a future. So hope is what we're supposed to be operating in. Alright? Hope is, let me tell you what hope is. Hope is confidence that your future would be better than your past. So in other words, as long as you're saved, your worst days are behind you. That's what the scriptures say. Your worst days are behind you as long as you're saved. Why? Because God is saying, as long as you're in my future, the future I have for you is better than the past. So what the devil wants to do is he wants to true anxiety cause you to live in a world, live in a future that God is not there. In other words, Jesus said, take no thought for when? Tomorrow. So, uh, let, 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 me, let me tell you, let me give you an example in my own life. I had a few car problems recently, brother. And I mean, there was a time, you know, sometimes when these cars, when they start to call, they call it. Right? <laughs> when they call it, they call it every month. Alright? And so I had an a issue, uh, and it was one issue that turned into two issues. And it's as though every single month, Adana, is car problems. Until it reached a place where when I sit down in the car, especially when I'm going with my family, I have a bit of anxiety. Because I'm wondering, will this car break down today? That's what I'm saying. Anxiety is living in a future. Now, mind you, there was no point where I had problems that God didn't show up in. I want you to understand what the, the deception of the enemy. So, in other words, if God did it before, He can do it again. Yeah. But in anxiety, I'm picturing a future where I am the victim. I believe you will understand what I'm saying. That's the danger of, of anxiety, the danger of worry. He said, be anxious for nothing. So I had to, I had to go in prayer to say, Lord, you see the problems with this guy. Lord, I believe in that you're going to give me a brand new thing this year. But before that, you know, before that, Lord, I, I, I need you, I need, I need you to really come and to really be with me because I, I don't like this feeling. This is what this is what Paul is saying. Pray about that anxious moment. Pray about that situation. So you're in other words, you're, you're thinking and having thought for tomorrow, you're thinking, what if I run out of money? But he's Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. 
So in anxiety, I'm picturing a need without the provider. Be anxious for nothing. The presence of anxiety is the absence of a solid prayer. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that you're not praying. But last week we spoke about prayer as a toolbox. You remember that? Prayer is a toolbox. And we're going to unlock this today. So sometimes you could be using a particular tool that is not fit for this situation. So you could be praying, as Jane said, praying amiss. So Paul is saying, let's, let me break it down for you. Let me break it down to you. Look at what Paul is saying. Let me break it down to you. There are five different types of prayer. Listen to this, church. Five different types of prayer in Philippians chapter 4 that Paul said that you need to use in order to get rid of anxiety. That tells me just how dangerous and just how uh, much of a problem anxiety is. That it takes a combination. You know, when there are problems, you know, there, there's problems that come up in your home that you will need a hammer for. There are problems that will come up that you may need a, a wrench or a screwdriver. But when there, there's certain problems, when there's a problem that requires you to use the whole toolbox, you know that's a problem. Yeah. So Paul is saying, listen, you see anxiety, you see worry, you need the whole toolbox for that. So look at what he said. He said everything by prayer. That's the first, that's the first two. That's the first two. Because all of those are different words in the original language. Right? Let me just tell you what it means. The word prayer means to draw near to God in order to make an exchange. Y'all listening to me? Yeah. Drawing near to God in order to make an exchange. That's what Hannah did. Do you remember what Hannah did? Hannah came. She drew near to God. She would spend time in the temple. Why? Because she needed an exchange. She needed God to give her a child. So she said, Lord, I am giving you my anxiety. I'm giving you how I feel about this. I'm giving you my, my worry and my doubt. And I want you in turn to bless me with a son. So when, when it comes to anxiety, what you need to do, you need to, you need to go to God and say, listen, Lord, I'm not just giving you the situation, but I'm giving you how I feel about it. Mm. I, 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 I'm not just giving you this, this, this problem, but I'm giving you how this problem makes me feel. Be anxious for nothing. Just, just remember that word exchange, right? We're going to look at that. That word exchange. So that's the first word. With prayer and here's what the next word, supplication. That uh, the word supplication means someone with a lack. Strongly asking God to help. So in other words, it is the same word that is used in James when he spoke about the effectual fervent prayer. Of a righteous man appears much. He said Elijah was a man of light passion. See, he was, in other words, he's saying Elijah, he's nothing special. He's nothing more, he's no more special than the rest of us. But he prayed earnestly. That's the difference. He prayed earnestly. A strong request. That is bringing to God and you're saying, God, listen to me. I need you to deal with her. You're watching me like you never prayed like that. You're, Lord, I need you to deal with him. I need you to, to, to really deal with this situation. I need you to, to, because if you don't do it, I don't know what it will do. That's, that's strong. That's supplication. But look at the next one. It's a combination. You, you, this, this problem of worry is not a, a problem you can just get rid of just soon. He said, with thanksgiving. So he said, uh, uh, the word thanksgiving is the Greek, um, in the Greek it means to, to, to give thanks for what he has done, 
for what he is about to do. You know, so many times we are in prayer. And I want you to understand that if you are if your prayer, if thanksgiving is not a, in, a key ingredient in your prayer, then pro chances are you're not praying the way God wants you. Amen. Because he said, look at what he said. He said, pray, supplication with thanksgiving. So in other words, thanksgiving is a is, 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 is a must. He said prayer with, with prayer and supplication, but thanksgiving needs to be there. Yeah. It needs to be in that prayer. Yeah. Alright? Because why? You're dealing with worry, you're dealing with anxiety. And as part of anxiety is so focused on a future without God that you, you forget the God of your past. When you're in worry, you're so focused on a future when you are the victim that you forget the God of your past. And so this is what he's saying. He's saying that in order to, to effectively deal with this, you need to be praying with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Your thanksgiving needs to be, Lord, I, 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 I'm coming to you all this, but first I'm going to thank you for what you did that day. Yeah. I, you know, Lord, I know this situation is tough. But I want to thank you that you didn't allow me to cuss them up. Oh, Jesus. Yes. I, I, Lord, I know, I know, I know, Lord, I know. I understand that I, I don't have the money for this, but I thank you for providing for me to pay that emergency bill. That's, that's prayer. Win. Yes. 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 None of our prayer should be without. Regardless of how intense the situations may be, every single prayer must have yes. It is a good thing. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Come on, just, let's just thank you. Uh, the sermon is not finished, but let's just thank you. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we love to thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so strong. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're already working it out. We thank you that you're already fixing it. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for what you're about to do. We thank you for already dispatching angels on our behalf. Thank you. With thanksgiving. Guess what he said? Let him. So we saw the first tool of prayer is prayer, which is drawing near to God in order to make an exchange. The second tool is supplication. Alright, that is a strong, I mean a strong request. You're, you're saying, Lord, I, I lack this, so I need this. The third uh, prayer tool is thanksgiving. The fourth prayer tool, he said, request. Wait a minute. So what is request? Request is the actual situation. So in other words, he said, I know you're anxious about it. I don't want you to miss this. He said, I know you're anxious about this. But here's, here's, here's God's timetable. Here's God's uh, list of priorities. Alright? The, the actual request is fourth. It's second to last on your list. What is it? So in other words, some of the things that are so pressing to us, God is saying, when you get into my presence, none of it matters to a point where you almost forget to pray about it. Oh, Jesus. That ever happened to you? You ever went into a time of prayer and it's as though God was waiting on you. Hallelujah. And, and it's as though you almost forgot what you came there for. Yeah. So he said, let your request, your request is forth. Your request is second to last. Let your request. Uh, uh, the word request is a full expectation that God is going to do it. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. It, 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 it request there means a full expectation. I want you to understand how powerful, how important expectation is. So when you're praying about it, you're not praying about it like a victim. You're, you're not praying about it. You know, you just say, Lord, deal with this for me, please. You're praying about it, knowing it, it, it's one thing. Let me tell you, 
you ever, someone ever gave you a word, I mean, and you know, let's say you, you have someone in your life that is a person of their word, and you ask for something. You know, I, they're, 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 they're children, and this is why God wants us to be like children. There are some children that will say, Mommy, could we go out for ice cream later? And you as a parent say, yeah, we'll go. That child will leave. And she's not even going to really think whether you're, you're telling the truth or you're lying. <laughs> you, that, that child is as though when when your child, when your child, when a child speaks to his or her parent, it's almost as though the trust that they have in your word as a parent. They, 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 they don't even have to, to, to you, you don't have to keep going and telling them, I will do it, I will do it. No, no, no. You, you say, we're going to go later. And that's it, they go on and they go on and play. This is what the scripture is saying. When you come to God, and you make a request make the request as though you fully expect God to meet it yeah. mm. you, it's as though you fully expect God to do this thing let your request yes. so you're saying God I'm not, I'm not coming to ask you know if by chance Lord I, I know that you're going to take this thing from me I know that you're going to come in the meeting some way in this situation. That's what is a request. But here's the last thing he said. He said, let your request be known unto God. Let your request be known. That word known. He said, after you make the request, because you fully expect God to do it, go and begin to talk about it. <laughs> oh my God. In other words, he said, don't, don't just say you expect God to do it, but I want you to go and broadcast, go and testify of what God is going to do. Yes. Let your request be made known unto God. So when you when you're showing God, you're letting God know, listen, by me broadcasting this, I fully expect you to do, it, to do what you said. And so I'm going to do this as though you know, I'm going to broadcast this thing, I'm going to spread this thing in such a way because I, I know, I fully expect you to come true. Remember we spoke about exchange, right? Look at what Paul said. I'm closing now. Give me, give me 10 more minutes. Praise God. Verse 7, look at verse 7. And the peace of God. At the beginning of verse 6, you would have been an anxious wreck. <laughs> Do we all agree? At the beginning of verse 6, you would have been an, an, an emotional wreck. You're worried. I mean, you look, you're, you're going to the mirror and you realize he is missing, you know? That, that, that's the type of worry. There are some people, they worry until somebody here fall out. You, you know, you're, you're worried to a place. There was this man, he was so worried about dying from cancer. And so for 30 years, every single day, he would have this sort of emotional meltdown. I, I hope I don't die of cancer. But not too long after, he died of a heart attack. What is the point? The point is worry about nothing. Yeah. What is the point of, 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 of being nervous about how you die? <laughs> Alright? So he said you're an emotional wreck in verse 6. But after you use your prayer toolbox, thank you. After you use your five tools of prayer. Here's what Paul said. And the peace of God. Now, 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 first of all, that, that, that did something to me. Why? Because there's Paul spoke about peace with God. That's different. Alright? That is the peace in knowing that your sins are forgiven. 
Then Jesus spoke, speak about the peace from God. He said, this peace, I leave with you. Paul and all his letters said, uh, grace and peace from God our Father. But that's not the peace that Paul is talking about here. He said, and the peace of God. Oh, Jesus. Then there's peace with God. There's, there's peace from God. But then there's the peace of God. Oh, well, okay. Okay, let, let me break it down. Let me break it down. If someone dies with COVID, then they would have died, but they would have tested positive for COVID. So COVID is not the source of the death. They didn't, they didn't mean. If someone dies of COVID, then that means that COVID was the one that claims the life of the person. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So when Paul said, peace of God, he is not talking about the virtue that comes from God, but he's really talking about the peace of God himself. Let me break it. I need to break this up. I need to break this up. Paul said, if we would pray, there would come a time where God will allow you to share in his nature of peace. In other words, he's saying, when you pray about it, God will allow you to feel exactly how he feels about it. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna cause you to, to come up to his, to his, his nature, to share in the way that he feels about it. So in other words, the, the, the same story with the pilot and the guy who was, who was a, a late, the, the, the peace of a pilot who's flying the flight is different. You understand what I'm saying? So when this man who was an emotional wreck, he came and it's as though he got the peace of the pilot. Why? Because he's walking with the pilot. So in other words, he knows that as long as I'm with this man, I get to know that thing. So Paul said, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. I don't have the time to go into that. Which surpasses all understanding. Look at my final point. Well, God. He said the peace of God. Let me tell you what the peace of God is coming to do. He said the peace of God now is going to guard your heart and mind. That word guard means a bodyguard. Oh, Jesus. You see, before, anxiety and fear and worry had, they could just walk up on me and just do what you want, what they want. Do you understand? The enemy through anxiety could just come into your heart and begin to disturb your life. But God said, listen, when you begin to pray, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share my peace. I look at what my peace is going to do. My peace is going to be your bodyguard. My, my, my peace now. So in other words, fear and anxiety now, when it comes, you ever see somebody walking with a bodyguard? When, when, when someone is walking with a body, if someone, if a celebrity is walking on the road, anyone could go, hey, you know, brother, uh, go and hug him up. But when, a, when somebody is walking with security, you have to approach differently. So, so, so Paul is saying, listen, when you begin to pray, the enemy now, before he had, he, he could just walk up on you. He could just bring a bombard your life. But now the peace of God. This is the first time I hear about the peace that God wants. <laughs> oh Jesus. He is the only time we know about peace that means, you know, I, I don't want no problems, you know. I just want a nice quiet space by the by the river. You understand? That, that, that's what we take peace is. But God's peace is a peace that ready to fight. God's peace, church, is, a, is not a peace that does not want trouble. I want you to understand that. God's peace is not, uh, not our peace. You know, our peace is, listen, I just want peace, you know. You know, I, I'm not a man of war. I just want peace. That's not God's peace. God's peace.
as a peace. <laughs> God's peace ready to fight. And so God said, so the peace of God now is going to guard your hearts and minds. It reminds me of Psalm 2 when I close now. The, the, the psalmist said, listen, the enemy is that they, they can spine against me. Here's what the scripture says. He that sits in the heavens will laugh. Yes. Yes. Oh, Jesus. The, 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 he that, this is the peace. This is the peace of God. Yes. All right? When, when David said, listen, the enemies, they come into me. They come in to try to mash me up. They come in to try to destroy me. But the scripture said, listen, the, 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 he that sits in the heavens, And then, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what that means. It is as though you have a smaller brother. And you're the bigger brother. And some little boy coming around your smaller brother. And you stand, you sit down right there. And say, boy, I will beat you. You know this is I will beat you. As a big brother, you just. <laughs> Lashing up. I, I want everyone to understand what I'm saying. You start to laugh because you say, you, you go and touch my brother and I here. Lashing this is what This is what the peace of God means. It means that when you're walking, now anxiety can run upon me and I'm bushy. Anxiety can abuse me again. Why? Because I'm rolling with the peace of God. And the peace of God is saying, ha ha. I want to say, devil, I want you to try that what you did before. Lash him. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Can we stand this morning? Listen, I have not a care in this world. Be anxious, be careful for nothing. But in everything. Nothing too small. Nothing too big. Pray about everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to just bring to your mind anxious what is it in my life what is it maybe something to come maybe something that has happened already if you would use these five prayer tools I believe that God is going to make an exchange and he's going to take this anxiety and he's going to give you a peace, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. It's a peace that is coming upon you that you cannot even understand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift every anxious moment, every situation that causes your people to worry, Father, I speak the peace of God. That peace that is ready for war. That peace that has declared war upon anxiety and the source of it. Take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about the things of itself. Which one of you by worrying can add Just one grain of hair to your head or add a cubit to your stature. Father, we, we lay aside every anxiety this morning. We cast every care. 
we cast, we, we will not just, we will not just gently bring it, we're casting every care, we're, 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 we're throwing it at your feet, hallelujah, we're throwing it in your presence, we, we, we lift the care of finances, Lord, we cast the care of family, we cast the care of marriages, we cast the care of, Lord, even our careers, we cast the cares of the future we cast the cares of our health father we cast the cares of our education we cast the cares father of our children we cast the cares of, of broken relationships we cast every single care upon the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we know, we understand that God, you, you want to make an exchange. So we, we exchange it with your peace. We exchange it, Lord, with your calm. We exchange it with your prayer. Teach us to pray. Father, we pray, I pray, Lord, that you will, Lord, that we will cover up the cracks of our prayer lives. That, God, we will seal the areas of our prayer time that the enemy may have access. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could we just lift our hands this morning? In the presence of the Lord, I believe this is a practical word this morning. You have to make up in your mind, I'm not leaving this place until I get an exchange. That strong uh, request we made to you this morning, that Father, we are not leaving this place until you give us what is yours. We want to share. We want to share in the peace of God. We want to laugh in the face of the enemy like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you that you're going to work it out. Lord, we thank you that you're going to make a way. Lord, we thank you that you're going to meet a need. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you're going to lift a burden. Father, we thank you that you're going to come through for us. We fully expect God to do what he said he's going to do. Lord, we thank you this morning in advance for taking the burdens of your people. Hallelujah. Lord, you said my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, Father, we lay down the heavy burden of anxiety. Father, all, all those who are viewing online, we lay down. I pray today that, Father, you will lift the burdens off of your people. That God, you're going to lift the fear of death. You're going to lift the fear of sickness. You're going to lift the fear, oh God, over your, of your people. In the name of Jesus, I declare that we are people that have not one king. In this room. The peace of God. Oh, hallelujah. The peace of God. We thank you for the peace of God. The peace, the peace. Peace, be still. We thank you for the peace of God. The Lord is lifting burdens. The Lord is lifting, he says that he's even lifting the burden of guilt. He's lifting burdens. 
He's removing heavy stones off of our backs. Hallelujah. He's lifting burdens. He's lifting burdens. Come on, just tarry just for a few minutes. Just for a few moments. We come to the house of God to receive something. Lord, we're going to testify. I know we testified before. But after I pray, I want to leave room for two testimonies of broadcasting. Thank you, Jesus. I want to leave room for two testimonies of God brought up all of us broadcasting what God has done and what he's going to do. Lift it, Lord. Lift it, Lord. Lift the burdens. Lift the burden of our family. That burden of always having to be the one. That burden of always having to be there. That burden of, of always having to be well. That burden of always having to be at the pillar. That burden. Lift those burdens this morning. In the name of Jesus. 